Have you ever had an idea so big you didn't think it could work? This was mine. This is the particle accelerator that I built. If you're not even sure what a particle accelerator is, don't worry about it. My team was at the same point at the start of this project. First, a little science. Everything that we see around us, you, me, this room, is made up of tiny little atoms. Now, atoms themselves are made up of three things, or three particles. At the center, there's a proton and a neutron. And then hovering around the outside are electrons. Electrons are the particles that are responsible for all the electrical behavior that we see in the world. It's these electrons that our machine accelerates. We use very high voltages, over 120,000 volts, to rip the, the electrons off of their atoms and to shoot them down a beam tube at over half the speed of light. The, the system we built fits on a desktop and it plugs right into the wall. It uses about the same power as 10 ordinary light bulbs. Now to build this, we had to fundraise over $10,000, which might sound like a lot, but it's not much compared to the over 200,000 that you would have to spend if you tried to buy this thing in a store. And they don't sell them in stores anyway. But how did all of this come about? See, I just graduated with my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Most engineering students in their final year are asked to do a class called Capstone, where you get to design and build something as part of a team. Now, common projects at my university were things like modified bicycles or remote-controlled airplanes. But I was looking to do something different. You see, Capstone, even though with all of its work, is the bane of a student's existence, it's also the chance where we get to show what we can really do. It's the chance where we get to really be creative in what we do. As a student, you get into engineering because you love to build things, and you love to build them bigger and better than anyone who's come before you. It's what drives progress, and Capstone's no exception. I was looking for a project that I could really be proud of. So about a month before school started, a friend of mine approached me with this idea, this project of building a linear particle accelerator. Now, I knew a little bit about accelerators, but I in no way thought that we could ever build one that would work. This project completely consumed my life for over eight months. It pushed and challenged me in ways that I didn't think possible. But I'm happy to report that in the end, and much to everyone's surprise, including my own, I think, we managed to turn on a working particle accelerator. Not only that, but we did it on budget and three weeks ahead of schedule. But I've got to tell you, the first time we flicked that switch, we had no idea what to expect. There were so many unknowns, so many uncertainties along the way, we just couldn't have any idea what would happen. But when we realized that it was working, that what we had built was actually doing what it was supposed to, the feeling that came over me was just indescribable. I was overjoyed. I must have been jumping up and down, screaming for about 20 minutes before my teammate finally calmed me down. It was just an amazing feeling to know that we had actually done this. We had built a particle accelerator. So this project, this project was tough, and it taught me a lot along the way. But what I learned didn't have anything to do with physics. Instead, this project was all about taking on a seemingly impossible task and then making it happen. It's my hope that the lessons I learned can be applied to any overly ambitious project that any one of you may have, from writing a novel to helping save the environment. These are my seven tips for building your next particle accelerator whatever that may mean to you. Tip number one, know what you're getting into and make sure that you love it. When it's a project this big, make sure you do re your research. Make sure you know what you're in for and that you can devote the time and effort to this. The summer that I got asked to work on this project, I was actually already working at a particle accelerator here in Vancouver. That's where my interest came from. Every day I walked into work past multi-million dollar science experiments that were testing the frontiers of what we know about the universe. I stood in awe of these giant machines and all of the knowledge and ingenuity that had gone into building them. I wanted to share in that, at least a little bit. But I also knew how much work it would be. That's why at first, I was hesitant about even taking the project on. But in the end, it was something I love. I love science, I love physics, I love pushing boundaries, and I love learning new things. That's what made me take this project. Here's a picture of me at CERN. It's pretty sweet. I, I love it. The point is, 
when you're taking on a massive project like this, you have to make sure that it's something that you love. Because when you've just spent 16 hours in a computer room getting nowhere fast, you're going to need something to hold on to. Tip number two, get to know the right people. You've heard the expression, it's all about who you know. Well, what they don't tell you is that you can work this to your advantage. In your project, you're going to need help. You're going to need advice. You may just need someone to bounce ideas off of. Those people exist. You have to go out there and you have to find them. We went to everyone for our project. Here's just a partial list of some of the people who donated anything from time and expertise to spare parts. But don't make the mistake of going to people with your problems. Instead, go to them with your idea. This idea of yours is something that you love and that you're passionate about. Share that with other people. Talk to them about it. Get them involved. The key is to find the right people and then make sure that they care just as much about your project as you do. Get to know the right people. In my case, I knew that I was going to need help with the physics. The problem was that the physics department at my university was on a campus half an hour away. My solution was to take an extra class. I took a physics lab that forced me to trek out there twice a week. But in doing so, I got to know two lab technicians who were absolutely instrumental in the success of this project. They offered me advice. They lent me thousands of dollars with the lab equipment, no questions asked. But more than that, they cared about the project. As a matter of fact, I remember one day when I was at my wit's end, I was ready to quit. I didn't know what to do. One of the lab technicians told me that I couldn't quit. The project had come too far. Quitting just wasn't an option. I swear, I think he wanted to see the project succeed even more than I did. Tip number three, don't be afraid of a little hard work. Actually, no, that's not right. What I mean to say is, don't be afraid of a ridiculous amount of really hard work. If you're going to accomplish something new, something amazing, something that's never been done before, you better be ready to work a lot harder than anyone else who has come before you. Now, if you paid attention to tip number one, which told you to know what you were getting in for, then you'll be ready for this. But beware of the sacrifices that you may have to make. This project forced me to cut time out of everything else that I love to do in life. My girlfriend joked that we should call the project the Date Destroyer because of all the Saturday nights that we spent in a computer room. The balance between life and work was tough, but in the end it was worthwhile because it was for a project that I was passionate about and that I really believed in. Which leads me to tip number four. Don't listen to naysayers. Avoid them at all costs. They're a drain on your time, your energy, and your morale. Most of them are too nearsighted to, sit, to share your vision anyways. What you have to realize that is that when someone tells you that something can't be done, what they're really trying to say is that they wouldn't be able to do it themselves. There are few things I enjoy more than accomplishing something that everyone else told me I couldn't. Tip number five, gain the experience. As young people, one of the hardest things to do is to gain experience. Everyone wants some before they'll let you do anything, right? There's a loophole here. No one can stop you from gaining your own experience. All you have to do is do something. Go out there, get involved, take initiative. If all else fails, do it yourself. The experience I needed for this particle accelerator can be traced back to this skateboard. Years ago, I wanted to learn how to ride, so I built a skateboard out of an old street sign that I found. I love this skateboard. I still ride it to this day. So next, when I wanted to learn how to play guitar, guess what I did? I built one out of an old street sign. Now, the guitar sounds awful, but I rigged up all of the pickups and amplifiers myself, which taught me enough about electricity and electronics to build this guy. Now, by this time, I was getting really interested in electricity. I was also working at a science summer camp, and they were looking for a really cool demonstration that involved electricity. So that's when I decided to build this. It's a 9,000 volt Jacobs ladder that turns air into plasma. Now, the actual construction of this only took about a day, but I had to do two weeks of solid research to make sure that I was safe enough to be able to work in a summer camp. Next came the accelerator. That design called for over 120,000 volts that could be operated safely. It was a big step up, but by this time, I had gained enough experience that I at least knew where to start. The point is, experience can come from so many different places, and you never know where one thing will lead you. So go out there, gain experience, or just make your own. 
Tip number six, discuss, plan, and then act. When people have big ideas, most of them are really good at discussing it. They'll talk to their friends and family, get outside perspectives, and really look at their idea from all angles. And that's great. People who are really dedicated to their big idea will plan. They'll figure out what they need to do and how to do it. And that's really important. But the vital step is the action. That's also the step that so many people don't get to because it's the scariest part too. But it's the action that'll transform your idea into reality. My group had a lot of tough deadlines that absolutely forced us to act. Oftentimes, before we were 100% sure of ourselves or our designs. But you know what? That's okay. Because if we had waited until we were completely sure of our designs before we did anything, then this project would still be on the drawing board. Our solution was to always have a plan B. As a matter of fact, we usually had a plan C, D, E, F, and G as well. We weren't sure that any one of these plans was going to work, but we were banking on the fact that at least one of them would. When you're doing something new, something that hasn't been done before, there will be a lot of uncertainties. You have to push through them. Sometimes it takes a leap of faith. I'm here to tell you to take that jump. Just make sure you have a backup. And tip number seven, follow through to the end. Nothing great has ever been accomplished by people who gave up. I know things may be tough, but the only way to make them easier is to work at them. And if you succeed, great. And if you don't succeed, that's great too, because you'll have built up the experience you'll need to make the next project work. My team and I were lucky. It was tough, but we worked really hard, and we managed to create the first working particle accelerator built by undergraduates in Canada. But what I really gained from this, uh, this project was the experience. It taught me so much, some of which I've tried to share with you here today. It's my hope that I've given you some tips that will help you build your particle accelerator, whatever that may be. Thank you.